Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here. And Jordan Drake here. And as you guys have just seen, the Canon EOS R3 has been announced that it is being developed. Uh, we still don't have a release date for the camera, but this is exciting news. We don't want to give you guys a spec rundown, though. You can see that in the development notes. We really want to talk about our reactions to this interesting design. Yeah, what it could mean, basically, yeah. on the little information that we have. Uh, the biggest thing is Canon's got stacked sensors now, stacked full-frame sensor. This is huge. I mean, Sony has basically owned the sort of full-frame stack CMOS line, and they've put it to good use in cameras like the A9 and now the new A1. So we've talked about how exciting this is to have fast readout sensors that in a lot of ways might even mitigate the use of needing mechanical shutter. Yeah, and they're saying 30 frames per second, which is right in line with what Sony's doing. Uh, I'm very curious what we're gonna see in terms of a mechanical shutter. They keep saying, this is not a 1DX series. It sits right. in between the R5 and the 1DX. That makes me think maybe it's not gonna have that crazy fast mechanical shutter that we've seen in the 1DX, but you probably won't need to use it if it's a super fast electronic shutter. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. It was a really cryptic kind of message on their part. And of course, EOS R3, if you go by sort of Canon's numbering on their models in the past, the three was never the flagship. It was just below the flagship. It was their small pro body, yeah. Exactly, but this is not small. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, are they going to do something even higher end than this? We don't even know what kind of megapixels we're going to be dealing with on the sensor. But it says, uh, you know, Canon says this is their sensor. They built it, so it's not a Sony rehash. Yeah, we also know it's dual pixel autofocus, so similar focusing to what we're seeing in an R5, I'm guessing. Now, while we're on the topic of older cameras like the Canon EOS 3 and now, of course, the modern R3, eye control autofocus. This was a feature you could get on the EOS 3 where it would actually uh, move the focusing point based on where you looked with your pupil, but it yeah. was notoriously inconsistent. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, it didn't work at all. It worked great for me, didn't work well for my wife. I mean, it would vary, yeah. but I mean, that was over 20 years ago, sure. so I'm sure the technology has moved on a lot. Absolutely, and of course we don't know how they're going to implement this, but it could save a sports or journalistic photographer a lot of time not having to manipulate a focusing point by using the joystick or touch screen, but rather look where they want. Maybe it'll start tracking autofocus at that point. Could be exciting, we're going to try it out. One thing that is on the 1DX series that I would love to see in this that they haven't talked about is it had a great function where it would use touch control on the AF on button. Yeah. If we had a joystick and touch control on the AF on button and eye control. That would be awesome. You could just choose what works best for you. Absolutely. Now, another thing that we do have on the 1DX and that we now have on this camera for sure is an integrated vertical battery grip. Which you so, love. I hate this camera right off the bat, so I'm not going to buy it or play <laughs> with it or anything, but everybody else loves it. Yeah. And you know, that does give us the option of then having more battery life because that's one thing that the 1DX series are famous for. Yeah, and usually they keep those batteries in the 1DX series. They said this is below the 1DX, so I wonder if it's just going to be two of the new LPE6 batteries in that vertical grip or a new battery type. We'll have to find out. So being a video guy, one thing I found really interesting is they didn't say anything no, about video one thing. <laughs> in this. The complete opposite of the R5, where it was all about the video specs yeah. before the camera was actually announced. So I am very curious what we're going to see. The things I really hope they address, obviously, I hope it's got better control of the heat, but a larger body should really help out with that. I mean, after the R5 and R6 sort of, you know, bad press Debacle. fiasco, I'd be surprised if they didn't make this thing a, a freaking I think they igloo. probably learned their lesson. <laughs> I'd also really like to see some improvements in the processor because there was just weird stuff like mm. when you started recording you'd lose your histogram and level things like that that I think are processor dependent so hopefully beef up the processor a little bit it's going to need it if it's pushing 30 frames per second mm -hmm. and uh, that'll address some of those issues as well. What I'm eagerly anticipating is just how fast the readout is going to be on this new stack CMOS right. sensor because it's great to see the major manufacturers, the Nikon Z9, the Sony A1, now this new Canon R3, they're all using stack CMOS sensors. They're all saying very fast readout speeds, you know? And so what that implies is, is again, pushing the industry towards getting rid of shutters. So, you know, hopeless, <laughs> shutterless, what else can they Battery take gripless, up? I hope, but you know, I, I doubt <laughs> it. But you know, yeah, it's exciting to see. And so we don't know what the megapixels are yet. Hopefully it has a fast enough readout that we don't get wobbly diagonals and we can just forget mechanical shutters altogether. Yeah, if you can use it with strobes as well, it's gonna be super compelling. Sure. I do think it's really interesting. We've now seen two pre-announcements from Canon and Nikon since the A1 was announced. I do think maybe they're a little bit nervous about the perception that Sony's a little bit ahead in technology right now. So we're gonna see some very cool similar things from both Canon and Nikon. Yeah. It's an exciting time if you're gonna buy a very 
expensive mirrorless camera. Regardless, I think it's pretty interesting to see that the industry is going in a certain direction. And uh, if you guys want to stay informed, the best way to do it, subscribe to the channel. Please click that notification bell because we will be following these developments as they flesh out more fully. Also, don't forget to go to deepyourview.com because there's also other reaction pieces on there that'll have more information and other staffers' opinions on this new development. And thank you guys so much for joining us as always. Uh, we will see you guys again shortly for another episode of Deep Your View TV.